Hey there, welcome to Old Man Runner. In today's video, I'm going to do this, the GoPro Hero 11. First, I'm going to go through why I use a GoPro to film when I'm running. Then I'm going to compare the 11 to the GoPro 10 and list some improvements. Finally, I'm going to see if I can recommend that you upgrade. I'm making this video because the GoPro Hero 11 was recently released and I have the 6, the 8, the 9 and the 10 and I want to see what, if any, improvements have been made to the GoPro Hero 11 Black. And uh, in this video, I'm going to go through what ones I've managed to find. And as always, there's chapter markers down below so you can skip through to the bits you want. And this is not a full in-depth review. It's really should you upgrade. But if you want me to go into more detail on any aspect of the GoPro Hero 11, pop something into the comments. I make videos about running and running equipment and I usually film the running pieces with a GoPro. They're always relatively lightweight, they're relatively easy to use, waterproof, flexible mountings and uh, the footage looks pretty good. Some of the footage that I take is static where I have a static tripod and uh, I run so I'll show some footage from me running in Chicago but I'd use a simple system like this extendable on a, on a pole. Some it's dynamic, so I'm running, and again, I'll show some from Chicago, but I'm running with this on a stick, so I mount the camera sort of upside down and then run out in front of me. Again, you can see the scenes in Chicago. Sometimes I want to look forward rather than at me, so I'll use a Chet's mount. I did that on the run from Bray to Greystones last year. Again, I'll show some footage, and I'll put links to some of these videos in the descriptions below, and you can see more examples. The great advantage of the GoPro is it's waterproof, takes a bit of abuse, and so here are some scenes of me running in through the water in my waterproof uh, cloud ventures last year, again, taken just outside of Dumbe. Bay. GoPro release a new camera pretty much every year, every September, 8, 9, 10, 11, no doubt 12. And uh, they all have small iterations. It, they kind of remind me of the Mad Magazine joke where Edison is an assistant and they're both in the laboratory and they're looking at all sorts of music playing devices, right from this master's voice, gramophone, big thing, all the way up to the latest one. And the assistant says, oh, but Mr. Edison, Mr. Edison, pointing at the latest one, why can't we sell him that one? And there it doesn't say, oh, we can't sell that one until we sold them all these ones in between. And that's what these iterations remind me of, of that GoPro probably have all of these mapped out. They're probably all ready to go, but bit by bit, there's an annual upgrade. If you look at the frame rates from the uh, Hero 6, it would do 4K at 60 frames per second, and Hero 10 will do 5 or 5.3K at 60 frames per second. Now, you could be asking, well, what does that matter? Because I'm not looking at this in my tiny phone on YouTube. Well, when I look at who watches what and where they watch it, 53.4% of people who watch these videos watch on a mobile device, 29% on a computer, 9.1% on a tablet, and 8.4% on a TV. And I'm trying to get as high resolution I can because people will be using bigger devices. And so every time something comes along, I try to upgrade to just get that little bit better resolution. I had high hopes for the new GoPro Hero 11. I was hoping that there would be uh, more resolution, particularly in slow motion. I'm trying to show the shoes in detail. I'm trying to show them close up as best I can. And the higher the specification, the more pixels, the more zooming I can go in without loss of quality. It's hard to actually film with the camera moving all over the place and focus in tightly on the shoes. But the more width I have, the more I can do. I was hoping to get from 240 frames per second and 2.7K. I was hoping that would go to 4K and that would have helped in the quality of the videos. But when the initial specifications came out, I was, I was really disappointed. They looked identical. I'll GoPro have a comparison here between the Hero 10 and the Hero 11 and I'll scroll down through them and you'll see there, there's not as many uh, upgrades as I was hoping for. So one thing they upgraded was the price from 399 to 449. 
but they also created it's got more pixels for photos but as you scroll down there's a remarkable similarity between the hero 11 black on the left and the hero 10 black on the right as a bit of hyper smooth a few extra there's a hyper view look but look how much of these are so similar time warp 3 i think they're almost identical from here on down just tick 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 yeah a lot of uh, very similar specifications gp2 new exclamation mark both times so when you look through yeah there is some 10-bit color resolution yeah there's hypersmooth 5 versus hypersmooth 4 there's 27 megapixels in photos versus 23 i don't really use them for photos there's a longer lasting enduro battery i have spare batteries the battery hasn't been a big problem um there are no key performance metrics for me in terms of increased frame rate increased resolution so initially didn't look very promising buried in all the specifications that gopro didn't really make a big deal of is a bigger sensor now has a proportion that's eight by seven or nearly square and that has been a game changer for me i could go down a specification rabbit hole but i'm going to try and keep it simple i export from premiere pro and upload to youtube in 4k 4k is 3840 by 2160 pixels now when i film in a gopro hero 10 at 5.3k i'm getting 5312 by 2988 pixels that means that i can move my frame around slightly so that i can either zoom in without a loss of quality or i can align it more up or down slightly now that allows me to frame the shot a lot better and gives me a little bit of overlap what happens in the new sensor in the, in the gopro hero 11 is it's the same width at 5312 but there's over double the height at 4618 versus 2160 and that gopro's improvements there have made my life hugely easier in filming these videos there are two use case scenarios for me where this increased sensor size has massive dividends in saving me time in my workflow when i'm running along and showing pictures of the shoe coming towards the camera what i want to do is lock the horizon so it doesn't look like the shoe is wobbling all over the place and making people dizzy and to do that originally i would have to do some keyframing in premiere pro but it was very hard to do and i wasn't very good at it um in the GoPro Hero 10, there is a horizon lock in uh, one of the modes, the linear mode, and uh, that does work, but I'm always filming with the camera upside down. And when you turn that on, if you turn the camera on and then turn the camera upside down, it then locks at 45 degrees. Now, it's not the end of the world. I mean, I've, I've been able to overcome it by mentally saying, right, remember to turn this on a particular way, but it has ruined, I'd say, a substantial amount of footage over the years that I've been making these videos. I got more skilled obviously in making the videos and but it was a faff to get around but it wasn't just me i was looking at a crime video the other day on netflix and the cops got out of uh, a car with a chest uh, mounted i don't know if it was gopro it was a chest mounted camera and as they turned and got out the camera it locked at 45 degrees so it wasn't just me but gopro did have a solution which is this the max lens mod you can attach it to the camera the lenses are interchangeable and you could attach it on change some settings and then this would allow the camera to rotate 360 degrees without the horizon moving and the horizon stays level but it would only record in 2.7k and when i wanted to zoom in again i lost quality so that was uh, not ideal but this increased sensor size in the new gopro hero 11 allows me to rotate i'll show some pictures of me doing six, some experiments but it allows me to rotate so that's one big weight off my mind i put the gopro hero 10 black and hero 11 black on a common mount and took them to the largest mirror in the house where i rotated them around an axis and you can see the hero 10 black the image is rotating you can see it in the mirror the cameras as they rotate with the hero 11 black you can see that the image stays stable even though the camera is rotating most of my videos are long and involved and <laughs> that's not so good for me and probably not so good for you either but it take a long time to make and i've been trying to learn how to make 60 second short videos sorry for sending you such a long letter but i didn't have time to send you a short one it's that old adage it takes a long time to go into making a 60 second video but one of the things is i've been filming them on my iphone so i take an iphone on an i footage mount with a little uh, uh leveler and then i typically take it down to the park on a um i footage monopod and it's quick and it's easy to make the problem is when you bring iphone footage into premiere pro it needs a lot of different lots color grading all that sort of stuff so i save time filming but actually I spend an awful lot of time in post-production. 
I tried making my short videos using the GoPro Hero 10. It was a bit of a faff. I attached the media mod and all of the accessories that fit the GoPro Hero 10 also fit the GoPro Hero 11. But it was a bit more tricky than I thought and, and uh, getting the thing level and all that sort of stuff just took a bit longer than I would have liked. And so what I gained in the speed in post, I lost in, in the film. But the beauty of the GoPro Hero 11 is with its big 5.3K sensor that's nearly square, you can just choose to extract out of it in 4K, either a horizontal video, landscape or portrait vertical, and then put it up to TikTok or YouTube or Instagram or or alternatively YouTube in whichever format that that uh, program uses. So that is going to save me a considerable amount of time. So should you upgrade the GoPro Hero 11? Well, if you were several iterations back on the GoPro money tree, uh, yeah, it's worth doing. It's worth the, the, the improvements. Little by little it gets better. And if you're back at the six or, or somewhere around there, it's very well worth upgrading to the GoPro Hero 11. But how about from the GoPro Hero 10? Well, if you shoot mainly landscape and you shoot always the right way up, nah, I wouldn't bother. Uh, yeah, there might be a little bit of um, better 10-bit color. Yeah, maybe Hyper Smooth 5 is marginally better than Hyper Smooth 4. But no, I probably wouldn't if I just had the 10 and didn't have the use case I had. I'd wait for the 12 next year or GoPro promised another camera later this year. Who knows, some people say it might be a professional version. Some people say it might be improved max, but I, I would hold off for the moment. But if you have the same use case as me, where you're mixing landscape and portrait and uh, sometimes twiddling it around upside down, all that sort of stuff, then yeah, the use case matches, it'll save you time. And time as you know is, well, yeah, running out. <laughs> Hopefully not too soon. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, it'd be great if you did the like button. As always, there'll be lots of stuff down in the description below and I'll happily answer any of the questions that you put into the comments. There'll be a big blue subscribe button popping up there and some radios there. Thanks for watching. Until the next video, just keep filming along.